Hi, I'm Joe Illick. I'm the music director of Fort Worth Opera. I'd like to tell you about La Traviata. This wonderful opera by Verdi, written in 1853, had a special meaning to the composer. In Verdi's early career, because Italy was not Italy, but owned by the French and the Austrians, Verdi wrote operas about people who didn't have a homeland of their own, knowing that the Italians would respond to these operas. La Traviata is based on a play by Alexandre Dumas, the son, not the father who wrote The Three Musketeers and The Man in the Iron Mask and the play of Hamlet that the French people saw in Paris, but uh, his son actually had had an affair with Marguerite Duplessis, who was one of the most famous courtesans in all of Paris. And this uh, character he turned into Marguerite Gautier in his play, The Lady of the Camellias, and Verdi turned her into Violetta Valéry in his opera La Traviata. In this opera, the heroine, although she is a character who is from the demi-monde, she is a courtesan, she nevertheless is the character of the greatest nobility and dignity in the opera. And Verdi uses this opera for propaganda to say, who are we as a society to judge whether the quality of a person is in the life they have led in this way or who they are in their heart. So he writes this with Violetta emerging so sympathetically she really becomes an angel at the end of the piece. The story of La Traviata begins at a party at Violetta's house. But before that party begins, we hear a short overture that tells us that Violetta has not been well. This first music is a depiction of Violetta who is suffering from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was so common in the 19th century and yet it was a death sentence. There was absolutely no cure for it. Violetta is only 23 years old. This second theme in the overture Verdi's incredible gift is that he is able to encapsulate so much feeling with such simple musical means. Minutes after this music happens, there is a party and you can tell that everyone is having a fantastic time. Violetta is throwing this party and some of her best friends are there, Flora and Gastone. Now Gastone has brought her a young man as a present. Uh, Violetta, of course, has no shortage of men in her life, but this young man loves her. And this is something Violetta has never experienced before. But she can tell when he begins to sing to her that he is not one more man who wants to own her, like the Baron Dufol, her current lover. He wants to commune with her soul, and to Violetta, this is something that she has longed for for all of her life. He sings. And she tells him to go away. 
She's not interested in having this kind of a love affair. But she does tell him to come back tomorrow. And when Violetta is left alone, she thinks, what would it be like? What would it be like to be loved, truly loved, for the first time in my life? And she allows herself to think about Alfredo, this wonderful young man, as that lover. But then she says, this is crazy. There is no way, and she's correct, in my social position that I could ever have that kind of a love or that kind of a life. So she throws the whole idea aside and she says, I must live always free in this gay whirl of pleasure that has been my life. she's singing about how there's no alternative for her, she hears Alfredo in the street singing his love song again. And suddenly she's caught. She can't decide whether she can possibly entertain this dream. Well, at the beginning of the next act, we find out that indeed she is. She and Alfredo have moved to the country and her health for the first time is finally coming back to her. Alfredo's father has already decided that Violetta is a low woman, a prostitute of no worth. Once he meets her, he quickly realizes that she is not at all the person that he imagined. But nevertheless, he is determined to persuade her to leave Alfredo. Violetta agrees to this, and Germain embraces her as a daughter. Violetta, left alone, writes a letter to Alfredo and tells him that she is going to a party at Flora's house with the Baron. She knows that this will break off her relationship with Alfredo. A, a servant comes in bringing Alfredo a letter. He says, it's from Violetta. Why am I so troubled? And he reads it and it says, by the time you're reading this, I will have left you. He suddenly puts the whole thing together and at this moment his father comes in begging him to return to Provence and to his family. The Provence I won you sworn, chi dal cor ti cancellò, chi dal cor ti cancellò, the Provence I won you sworn. But Alfredo can't even hear his father. He is so furious that Violetta has left him for the Baron. And as Alfredo's father is begging him to come home, Alfredo is swearing revenge. The next scene opens at Flora's party. <laughs> Flora's party, obviously, is another high, high fun party like the first one in the beginning of the opera. And there are women dressed as gypsy fortune tellers and there are men dressed as matadors. And of course, Alfredo comes in and suddenly the music turns very soft but very menacing because we know that this can't turn out well. greets Alfredo and says, what about Violetta? And he says, oh, I'm through all of that. And she says, good for you. So Violetta comes in with the Baron Dufault. Now Baron Dufault spots Alfredo right away and says to Violetta, not a word to Alfredo. And uh, Violetta agrees for the time being, but Alfredo is playing cards at a table and winning and the Baron decides that he's going to try to bankrupt Alfredo because, of course, the Baron has a lot more money. But Alfredo wins and wins and wins again. And uh, finally, they agree to a competition much more serious than a card game. They agree that they'll fight a duel. Violetta gets Alfredo's attention and has him come back from dinner before he has a chance to fight this duel with the Baron. And she says to him, uh, you must go away from here. And he says, oh, so you can be with your lover, the Baron? And she says, no, no, no. The only thing that would destroy me is if you were killed in this senseless duel. And Alfredo says, I will go away, but I'll only go away if you will go with me. And she says, I can't do that. 
Why not, says Alfredo. Well, she says, I promised somebody, and he says, the Baron, and Violetta realizing that she can't tell the truth and say, it's your father who has come between us in this relationship, says, yes, the Baron. And this enrages Alfredo so much that he calls all the guests into the room and says, do you know this woman, Violetta? I was so vile, I allowed myself to take her wealth, but I want you all to be my witnesses that I give it all back to her. And he takes all the winnings that he's made from his card game and throws them at Violetta, who is so heartbreaking that she collapses on the floor. At this moment, Germain comes in and gives his son a sermon on how to treat women with honor. Now, we as a 21st century audience see this as incredible hypocrisy, but this was the scene in which Verdi wanted to appeal to the bourgeois morality of his day and say, do you think this man is in the right to do what he has done? And uh, hopefully, Verdi wants the audience to go away thinking in a way that they have never thought before. So, the final act begins. Of course, this isn't a modern opera and Violetta does not get well and go off to a spa and never have tuberculosis again. She's dying and we know it's the final time. So she's waiting and waiting for Alfredo because Alfredo's father has written her a letter that tells her Alfredo will come. But he doesn't come and he doesn't come and she knows the minutes are ticking away. Finally, at the last possible moment, Alfredo rushes in and in the delirium that tuberculars often had, she believes that she has the strength to go away with him. And they sing, we're going to leave Paris and start a new life. But then suddenly Violetta collapses and Alfredo realizes that the end has come. At this moment, Germain, Father Germain, shows up as well and begs for Violetta's forgiveness. At this point, he is willing to allow Violetta and Alfredo to marry, but it's too late. And Violetta suddenly feels that her strength is all coming back, and just as she is soaring up to a wonderful high note, she collapses dead on the floor. It is the most spectacular opera ever written. It is the deepest expression of human feeling that any composer was ever able to achieve. And you will be able to hear it in the 2015 Fort Worth Opera Festival. I will see you there at La Traviata.